Hello and welcome to another episode of the Secular Buddhism Podcast. This is episode number 150. I am your host, Noah Rochetta. Today I'm going to talk about Buddha nature. As always, keep in mind, you don't need to use what you learn from Buddhism to be a Buddhist. You can use what you learn to be a better whatever you already are. If you're interested in learning more about Buddhism, check out my book, No Nonsense Buddhism for Beginners, available on Amazon, or you can listen to the first five episodes of this podcast. You can find those easily by visiting secularbuddhism.com and clicking on the link that says start here. If you're looking for a community to practice with and to interact with, consider becoming a patron by visiting secularbuddhism.com and clicking the link to join our community. It's been a few weeks since I've recorded a podcast episode. If you'll recall from the last podcast episode, um, I had recently lost a friend in a paramotor paragliding accident. And as soon as I uh, was wrapping up with that ordeal, on my way home, I found out my dad's health had deteriorated and I ended up catching the first flight out to Texas to spend time with him. And after seven days at his bedside, unfortunately, his uh, battle with cancer finally ended and, and he also passed away. So the last few weeks have been a little rough in terms of navigating these strong emotional experiences and intense feelings. And I have to say, once I um, came home from Texas, uh, it took me a few days to get back into the swing of things. I think there are a lot of natural stages that you feel with grief and processing loss. And there was certainly a period of time where I, quite honestly, didn't feel like doing anything. I was in a funk. And it's only in the last couple of days that I'm starting to feel like I'm back in the swing of things. And I was feeling the excitement once again to get back onto my schedule of recording podcast episodes because I do enjoy doing these podcast episodes and sharing my thoughts and my feelings. And it's a, a somewhat of a therapeutic thing for me to be able to share all of this in a, in a public setting like this. So thank you for uh, bearing with me these last few weeks as I have stepped away from the podcast for a little bit. And uh, thank you to everyone who reached out, people who were aware of the situation and sent me messages uh, of condolence, condolences and things of that nature. That was very comforting for me. So uh, with all that said, I'm back in the saddle, so to speak, and I'm excited to be talking today about the topic of Buddha nature. And this is a topic that popped into my mind actually while I was in Texas. So I spent, as I mentioned, seven days, my, my, the, my dad's last seven days, uh, were spent with his family at his side. My my two brothers, my twin brother, my older brother, myself, and my mom. And we were all there uh, with my dad. And it was a beautiful experience to spend that time with him as he gradually declined and ultimately passed. And I was very grateful to have had that time with him. And not just with him, but with my siblings and with my mom. It was a very uh, tender experience. But while I was there, I was staying in touch with home and with my wife and with my kids. And uh, I received a phone call from my wife, uh, just a regular update as we as we do, you know, when you're traveling. And in the update, I was telling the kids, asking the kids how their day is going and stuff. My uh, my daughter, my youngest said, Daddy, the Buddha rock, the painting on the Buddha rock washed away. And she said it with disappointment and sadness, anticipating that I would also be sad about this. So let me uh, rewind for a moment and tell you about this rock. Many years ago, when I graduated from the lay ministry program, I went back to visit and uh, for a future class, uh, uh, or uh, not a future class, but a class that had was graduating after my class had graduated. And while I was there, one of the activities that they did uh, was to paint rocks. And there, in, in this tradition that I studied with, um, there is a teaching that's the Dharma is my rock. And 
the whole idea was that you would take a rock, paint something on it to kind of remind you that the that the teachings of the uh, of Buddhism, the Dharma, if we call it that, it can work somewhat as a rock to anchor you in tumultuous times. Well, when the class was doing all this, I decided I would uh, go along with them, and I I tried to paint a little Buddha sitting in meditation on this rock. And this is comical if you know me well, because I can't draw at all. So imagine a stick figure Buddha uh, painted on a rock with paint and the orange robes. And uh, you, you could tell, if you looked at it, you could tell what it was. And I was very proud of my little stick figure Buddha painting on a rock. And I brought that home and had a little lesson with my family and just telling my kids, here's this rock and here's why I painted this. And, you know, these teachings anchor me somewhat like a rock is just anchored and immovable on the ground. And there was a whole lesson about it. And long story short, that rock ended up becoming, when we moved to Mexico, I took that rock. We have a spot in our backyard where my parents have, uh, they had a dog for many years. And when, when that dog passed, Tiny was her name, we buried Tiny in our backyard and she's been back there for years. But when we were moving to Mexico, I took this rock that I used to keep on my desk and I said, you know what, let's take it outside and let's put it in the spot of the yard where Tiny is buried. And it'll be like the Buddha is sitting there with Tiny. And Tiny's spot already has a, a big rock that's kind of like the memorial stone of where she was buried. And I took this little stone with the Buddha painting and I placed it on top of the the bigger rock that's Tiny's um, memorial stone. And that's where it's been for years now. Well, the year that we were gone in Mexico, we've been back for a year and that rock has just been sitting there this whole time. And so now fast forward to this call while I'm in Texas, my daughter was pretty upset that the painting with the sun and several winters, it was, um, the painting was coming off. So now we had this uh, little stone with the Buddha and now you couldn't see the painting anymore. So she was a little upset about that. So when she told me this, daddy, the, the painting has washed off the rock and she said it a little disappointed. I told her, oh good, now that the painting has washed off. Now you can actually see the Buddha in the rock. That's the real Buddha nature. And my wife was on the phone with me and she kind of chuckled and she said, well, of course you took that and turned it into a, a, a lesson about Buddhism and about Buddha nature. So when I got home, we went outside and we looked at this rock and I explained it to my daughter. I said, see how now that the painting is all washed off, now you can tell what it really is. And she said, yeah, it's just a rock. And I said, exactly. That is Buddha nature. And this lesson, this little visual has really stuck with me these past few days for many reasons. I think first and foremost, because I recognize that this rock, I took it and I painted, I painted an image on it. I'm the one that did the painting. I'm the one that turned it into a little stone that represents something else. And, and that was meaningful. I, I enjoyed what it, the visual of what it represented, but now I enjoy it even more because now I see it for what it really is. It's just a rock and you can see little traces of paint on it to remind you that it used to be a rock that was painted as something else, but now it's back to being just a rock. And to me, that is the essence of the understanding of Buddha nature. I feel like we go around as the painters and we paint on everything. We, we assign meaning to everything. And we ourselves, like these rocks, are painted on. We are painted on by society, societal norms and views, uh, perhaps religious views, uh, family norms, uh, the very language that we speak, these words that we use to communicate with each other. All of this is, is painted on us. And we're somewhat like that rock. We become something that now has meaning because of what's been placed on it. And this is, this is what we would be able to call conditioning. So according to Tricycle Magazine, uh, Buddha nature points to the aspects of ordin ordinary people 
that are in some way already the same as a Buddha. And some schools teach that Buddha nature is like a seed or a, a, the potential that we have that can be developed to become aware, or to become Buddhas, right? To become awakened. But in other schools, Buddha nature is understood to be completely present, but obscured by our delusions. And to me, this is the concept that makes the most sense. Uh, very similar to the story that I've shared in the past about the, um, the Buddha statue that was made of gold and covered in clay. And over time, everyone assumed it was a clay statue. But as the clay started to peel off over the years, eventually someone came to understand, oh, there's, this is a gold statue under the clay statue. The clay is like our conditioning and very similar to this little story about the rock in my garden. The paint that was on the rock is the conditioning and, and the conditioning was not placed there by the rock. It was placed by something else. In this case, it was me. And I feel like I am like that rock. I have uh, mental conditions that have been placed on me through societal norms, my upbringing, my family values and views and and all kinds of things. And there's nothing wrong with this. I, you, you can't help but to have these things, right? We can't just erase all of that. But by understanding that that is the nature underneath all of this conditioning, then there's just me. That is the Buddha nature. Uh, at least that's how it makes sense for me. And I wanted to share that because I think it can be a very powerful visual, both for how we view ourselves and also how we view others. Uh, when I look at this stone in my yard, I see both the the painting of the Buddha that has been placed on the stone, and I also just see the the stone that's just a stone with paint on it. And when I try to view people, I try to view it in that same lens. There, there's, there are people being just how they are, and then there are people with uh, conditioning placed on them. These are these come in the form of views, opinions, beliefs. And these shape the individual to become something that maybe they aren't, right? Like the rock is just a rock, but you paint it like a Buddha. And now what is it? Oh, well, now it's a, it's a little ornament, uh, but I made it that. And it's helpful for me to view other people in the same lens and to think every single one of us has been painted and we view ourselves with our painting as if that was the real me, when in reality, that's just the painted you. What is the real you? I don't know. I don't even know if that's even possible to see, but I know that what I'm looking at is the painted version of you. And that helps me to, if there's an aspect of the paint, let's say there's a really bright green paint that I feel an aversion to because I tend to like red paint. Um, I can understand that's not you that I don't like. It's the green paint that I don't like. And I think it's the same with views, right? You may have a very strong view that uh, leans this way or that way, politically or ideologically or religious, and that I feel an aversion to, but that's not you because you're not your views in the same way that the paint on you is not you. The paint on the rock is not the rock. So I think that's a fun way to visualize with a, you know, a way to visualize this concept and this teaching of Buddha nature. And then to explore that, what is my Buddha nature? What is your Buddha nature? And what part of me can start to recognize the part of you underneath the layers of paint? And that's the concept I wanted to share. That for me is in a nutshell, uh, the concept of Buddha nature. And I think just having that simple understanding helps to change the way that we view things. And I do want to add here that uh, when I look at a rock and it has painting, it's not about the rock and it's not about the painting. It's about me as the viewer. I'm the one that sees paint and I see a rock and I may not see the rock because I only see paint. The rock is always just the rock and the paint is always just the paint. I'm the one as the viewer who can separate the two and recognize, ah, that is a rock with paint on it. While someone else may view the same thing and say, no, that's a, that's a little Buddha stone. And someone else may look at it and say, no, it's just a rock. Someone else may look at it and say, it's a rock with paint <laughs> that looks like a Buddha. Uh, different ways of viewing it, none of which have to do with the item itself. They all have to do with the viewer. And 
That is something that I like to remind myself of constantly. I am the one doing the viewing. Everything that I perceive in my world, in my sphere of reality, I am the one that's doing the interpreting. I'm the one that's making the meaning. I'm the one that's perceiving things. And I'm far less concerned with what it is I'm perceiving than I am with understanding how is it that I perceive? What influences the way that I perceive my reality? What views, beliefs, or lack of beliefs shape the way that I perceive my reality? And I think that's where the uh, invitation can come in to make this a topic that you can sit with and explore is think of the Buddha stone, think of a uh, concept of Buddha nature and you as the viewer. What does that mean to you? And that's all I have to share for today. Thanks again for listening. Until next time. <laughs>